Well, thanks very much for, for the, uh, being permitted to speak here. I very much appreciate it. And um, I guess I can skip uh, along quite quickly since these classes have been defined already a few times. But uh, um, I'm going to speak about uh, three, the three classes we've met, um, frame matroids, uh, lifted graphic matroids, and um, quasi-graphic matroids, and look at their excluded minors um, for fixed rank. Uh, so frame matroids, okay, here's a basis uh, sitting in space. We call, it, we call it a frame. Jeff talked about this. Uh, we look at lines. We, we're allowed to place points on those lines anywhere we want. Um, and then we can throw away the frame if we want, and that gives us a frame matroid. Um, and we have a graph that we can associate with that matroid very naturally. Jeff talked about that already. Um, notice I have a pointer here somewhere. There it is. Uh, so what, what would lines look like? Uh, a, lo a, line, a line with a lot of points turns into a, a big fat set of edges. Right? Um, this, these two points are parallel. Uh, we get a loop there. So here's a line, uh, a line that has a, a loop on it. And as, as Jeff mentioned and as Rong mentioned, uh, these are what the circuits uh, in the graph look like uh, of the matroid, right? either balance cycles or pair of cycles meeting in most one meeting in one vertex, a pair of cycles with a path connecting them, or one of these theta subgraphs. And uh, here's a picture of a lifted graphic matroid. I've lifted it by an element E, uh, which I'm representing as a loop here. And uh, this cir the cycles in the graph now are of two sorts, either they're circuits of the matroid or together with this uncontracted element, you have a circuit. And the circuits of the lifted graphic matroid appear in, in that yellow blob after you delete E like that. Uh, subdivisions of, of either uh, you know, cycle, a pair of uh, cycles meeting in a vertex, a pair of disjoint cycles, or a theta. And then, as, as Jeff mentioned, quasi-graphic matroids, uh, the, you can think of them as um, you have the, a graph representing your matroid, and now circuits can take the form of, of any of these um, graphs, or uh, subgraphs. Um, theorem is gone. No, there it is. So the, th the three theorems uh, that uh, I wanted to talk about today are, the, uh, are these. Um, if you take fix some uh, positive integer r, there's just a finite number of excluded minors of rank r um, for each of those classes. And the proof idea is, is the same for each of those classes. Uh, if, you f if you have a fixed rank, uh, quasi-graphic, uh, quasi lifted graphic, or frame matroid, um, so script M is standing in for one of those classes, uh, that fixes the number of vertices uh, in a special canonically chosen graphic re graph representation for that matroid. Um, uh, this is where I discovered the <laughs> flatteringly named fundamental theorem of weak frameworks um, because I wanted to bound the number of vertices in a representation for a quasi-graphic matroid and it seemed like it wasn't possible and it turned out not to be. Uh, anyway, so we have a, if we have, for one of these, uh, we have a fixed, we have rank R, we, in the frame case we have R vertices, in the lifted case our canonical graph has R plus one vertices and in the quasi-graphic case, um, two R vertices was the best I could do. Uh, and then if you're throwing elements down, uh, as the number of elements grows, where do they, they can't go anywhere else but on a long line at some point. So at some point, if you're uh, looking at a, a, a frame lifted graphic or quasi-graphic matroid with lots of elements um, with a certain fixed rank, then you're gonna get a long line. Um, and because long lines only have, uh, you know, essentially a small number, well, three maybe ways to, I mean, mostly a long line is going to consist of a bunch of edges between a pair of vertices, perhaps with a loop. A frame matroid could have two loops at most, right, in a, in a long line. Uh, that allows us to bound the number of graph representations for um, a matroid in that class in terms of the rank. So if you have an excluded minor uh, and it's got a really, really long line, um, we, that means we're guaranteed to be able to find three elements, E1, 2, 3, uh, in that line, such that when you delete one of those out three elements, uh, you, look at this, you see the same graph um, in each case. And that allows you to just put the missing element back into one of those graphs and get a representation for your purported excluded minor, so that's a contradiction. 
So an excluded minor does not have a very long line, and that you get a bound on the length of that line, so now you have a fixed rank matroid with a, fi with a bound on the number of uh, elements. So that means you can only have a finite number of excluded minors of, of that rank. That's the proof for all three theorems, basically, right there. <laughs> yeah, I'm done. <laughs> Thank you. Questions? All right, any questions for Daryl? Jim. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so an excluded minor for the class of, oops, for the class of frame matroids doesn't have a line of length 10r to the power of 5r squared. You know, they're all r to the r squared to the uh, r to the r squared, except for the quasi-graphic is r to the fourth, I guess. Yeah. All right, so anyone else? Oh. Why is it larger? Um, because I couldn't... Uh, um, they were tricky. <laughs> My canonical representation for quasi-graphic matroids has, uh, if it's rank R, it has two R vertices. And um, um, so it, I guess very quickly I can talk a little bit. Uh, if you, in a frame matroid case, uh, if you have any, if this, is a frame, if this is a representation for a frame matroid, then these long lines here um, nail down um, any representation has to have exactly the, that subgraph. It, it gets completely nailed down. And then there's a possibility that these other edges that aren't in long lines might have some wiggle room. Um, but in the, in the lifted graphic and the quasi-graphic cases, they didn't have that, that luxury. So um, the, there's just was more variability in, in the possible number of representations. That, uh, and so the bound was worse. But, uh, yeah. Oh my God! <laughs> Probably. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll not actually. That's. Uh, I'll go look at it later. <laughs> Sorry, Dylan. What? <laughs> yes. Do you have any idea, like, if these bounds are sharp or if they're close? Oh, they're probably terrible. Yeah. <laughs> No, they're, yeah, yeah, no, they're probably rather not sharp, yeah.